This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. A place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. The latest class I took on Skillshare is Ink Drawing Techniques, Brush Nibs, and Pen Style by Yuko Shimizu, who's a professional illustrator based in New York. Though ink is not my medium of choice, it shares techniques such as brush control, understanding supplies, and strokes with watercolors. One of the things that struck me the most in this class is how she connected Chinese or Japanese kanji calligraphy into inking, where she took one character which consists of eight types of brush strokes used for inking and I just thought that it was so interesting. And I also really enjoyed her inking demonstration and drawing freehand with brush and ink. Just watching the brush glide with so much control and ease was just so inspirational to me. This class was 90 minutes long, but just like all the other classes in Skillshare, it's divided into shorter lessons so members are able to organize the classes into their own daily routines. After each class, members are able to post their personal projects according to the class and share it with everyone else as inspiration. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will have access to a month free trial of Skillshare Premium, which will give you access to all the classes Skillshare has to offer, and this includes all their new premium classes launch each week, with the addition of subtitles in Spanish, French, German, and Portuguese, so you have something new to discover and explore with Skillshare. Thank you again Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I want to paint different colorful spring flowers. Some of these are based on real flowers and some are just made up. And you can also use different color combinations for your painting, but let me just begin by showing you the colors that I'll be using for mine. The first color here is Cobalt Violet Light by Holbein, Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith, Ultramarine Violet by Amgram, Compost Blue by Holbein, this is a pink that I made with a bunch of different colors and I'll list the mixture in the description box but you can also use your go-to pink mixture as well. Next this is New Gamboge by Daniel Smith, Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Gold Brown by Schminka, Sepia by Holbein, and Sap Green by Holbein. Let's get right into the first one. These are the colors that I'll be using. This one is just a simple five petal flower. As I paint later, I like to begin by painting the petals first while leaving a little bit of space in the middle where I can add on another color. After that, I'm going to finish off the center with little dots as details and simple leaves on the sides which you're able to place according to how you paint the flowers later and find the best place which would frame the flowers nicely. So let's begin to paint. For this, I'm going to start with the pink mixture for the petals. I'm going to paint them just like how I drew them out. I'm painting them quite far apart. You can see that some of my petals are a bit lighter and some are a little bit darker. This is completely up to you, but this wasn't something that I was worried about. In fact, I don't mind the different values. I just personally think that it helps with building interest so the flower doesn't look too flat. For the middle, I followed this up with new gamboge while the pink was still a bit wet, so the yellow will spread out across the bottom of the petals. Once it spreads, I find that the yellow was a bit stronger than the pink, so I ended up adding the pink mixture again, and while I wait for the first flower to settle and dry off a little bit, I'm going to paint another one. Once the color starts to fade a bit and it's a little bit damp still, I just added a thicker consistency of new gamboge to make the color a bit stronger. And while I wait for the flowers to dry, I'm going to paint the leaves. For the leaves, I use a mixture of sap green, new gamboge, and sepia. I use more of the sap green and the new gamboge compared to the sepia for the leaves. And as for the stems connecting to the leaves, I added more sepia in the mix. 
I paint the stems on while the leaves are still a bit wet so you can see a nice transition between the two colors. Going back to the flowers again, I'm going to add the little dots for the stamens but the flowers wasn't completely dry yet so I ended up using my hair dryer to make sure that it's completely dry and it's not even cold to the touch and I'm going to go in with a mix of sepia and new gamboge to paint little dots with the tip of my brush. So this is the completed first flower, now let's move on to the next one where I'll be using the exact same colors. For this one, I'm going to paint a couple of flowers from the side view. The amount of petals is up to you, but I'm going to do around 4 or 5 visible ones, finished with thin stems and small leaves in groups of 3. For the color of the flower, I use a mixture of new gamboge with the pink that I have, and I paint the petals following the curvature of the flower. I'm going to paint using different ratios, so the first one is a bit more pink and the second one is going to be a bit more orange with more new gamboge in the mixture. As for the stem, I'm going to use the same green mixture with quite a bit of sepia so the stem can be a little bit darker for this one and I use more green in the mix for the leaves so the stem and the leaves stay separate. As for the stems connected to the leaves, I made them very fine so you can switch to a small size zero brush for this but I just kept mine at a very dry brush load so it comes to a very fine tip. This way I can control the weight and how thin I want the lines to be. Let's move on to the next one, here are the colors I'll be using. This flower is very simple, they're basically textured ovals with a tiny thin stem and tiny leaves. I'm going to paint a few of these and bunch them together. The texture is the most important thing about this flower. If not, the flower will look kind of flat. I like to use a light brush load to paint small and thin curved lines and follow the oval and curve of the flower so the edges stay nice and textured and a little bit fluffy. I'm going to begin by painting the flowers using cobalt violet light in a thick consistency. Cobalt violet light is a very light color so a thick consistency only gets me this far. However, you need to adjust the consistency according to the paint that you have access to. For this, I just paint a few flowers at once while scattering them quite randomly close to each other but not touching. Then once the surface is still a touch damp, I add rows of ultramarine at the center of each flower to give the wet on wet effect. For the stem, I use the same green mix as before. You can adjust the ratio according to what tone of green you want, but I decided to use the same tone for the stems and the leaves for this one. And I also stick to my size 4 brush with a dry brush load in order to paint the really thin stems, but you can always switch to your size 0 brush if you want better control. And that's it for this third flower. Let's move on to the next one. Here are the colors that I'll be using for the fourth flower. For this fourth flower, I'm going to be painting a yellow cone flower. For the stamen, I made it textured and it's shaped sort of like a flat oval facing according to the direction of the flower. As for the petals, I basically used leaf shapes which I'm going to rotate according to the bottom of the stamen and follow the curve of the flower to make the shape look more organic. Then I'm going to finish this off with thin stems and large long leaves. To paint this, I'm going to begin by using a thick consistency with a light brush load of gold brown to paint the stamen with small, thin, slightly curved lines bunched together creating those uneven edges. And I'm going to paint all three at once. Once I'm done, I'm going to follow this up by painting the petals using a medium consistency of just the Hansi Yellow Medium. I want to direct my brush according to where the petals are facing and I also want to touch a little bit off the tip of the petal to the gold brown so the color of the gold brown will travel slightly to the Hansi Yellow Medium. If the gold brown is completely dry by then, I use the dampness of my brush from the Hansi Yellow and I pull the brown in order to let the brown flow and blend slightly with the yellow manually. And just for added depth, I decided to add a little bit of sepia in the middle of the stamen area. 
After that, I'm going to finish off with the stems and the leaves. And just like the other flowers, I used a mixture of sap green, new gamboge with a little bit of sepia, but I just made the leaves longer for this one. And that's it for this flower. Let's move on to the next one. Here are the colors that I'll be using. For this one, we're going to paint blue roses. And for this, I just want to start by making small curved lines bunched in the middle. Then as I get to the outer petals, I like to add them misaligned to the petals before them. So the placement of the petals are nice and natural. I'm going to paint a couple of these later with the addition of round budding roses connected to thin stems and leaves to frame the composition. To paint this, I'm going to begin with a thick consistency compost blue for the center of the flower. Then as I get to the outer petals, I cleaned and dampened my brush slightly to pull the paint from the center of the flower to create very light blue petals. While the petals are still a bit wet, I like to add a medium consistency of either the same compost blue or ultramarine violet for a slight change or variation in tone of blue. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second flower as well, but I'm going to add a bit more of the ultramarine violet just to make it a little bit different. For the bulbs, I use a thin consistency compost blue and paint using the tip of my brush following the roundness of the flower buds. I also like to leave a little bit of negative space so the shape doesn't look too bulky and add a little bit of that ultramarine violet while the compost blue is still a bit wet. After this, I finish it off with the stem of the buds and tiny leaves next to it. As for the leaves and the stem, you can see that I used a darker green for this because I added ultramarine violet to the previous green mix in order to get this tone. And this is what the finished roses look like. For the next one, we're going to be painting billy buttons and here are the colors I'll be using. This one is super simple. They're basically just circles that is slightly textured on top of thin lanky stands. And to make the circle textured, I like to make them out of curved lines just like before to create uneven edges. And sometimes I like to rotate my brush to leave out white negative spaces as well. I'm also going to add dots following the curve on the edge to give a round volume to the flowers as well. To paint the flowers, I'm going to start with Hansi Yellow Medium by itself to create textured circles with the tip of my brush, making sure that the edges are a bit uneven with tiny negative spaces. After I've created a few flowers, I'm going to continue down with a thick consistency of the green mix from New Gamboge, Sap Green and Sepia with a dry brush load to create very thin stems. And after that, I'm going to finish it off with a thick consistency of New Gamboge and I'm just going to paint dots around the bottom of the flowers to give it a little bit of the round volume. This is the next flower that we're going to paint and here are the colors. For this flower, I'm going to begin by drawing out the middle with tiny little dots. I want to make the area of the stamen quite large and as for the petals, I'm going to create leaf shapes but a bit chubbier and rounder with smaller, thinner ones in between the rounder petals to lighten the bulk. I'm going to paint three of these later with varying angles which you can play around with if you would like but if it's a bit tricky, you can also make them just all face forward. For one of the flowers, I want to paint a side view in which the center is no longer visible and I'm going to finish them off with just thick stems without leaves. I'm going to begin by using a thick consistency of New Gamboge to paint the middle or the stamen area. I'm just going to dot this around using a thick consistency with the tip of my brush making sure to leave out a little bit of negative space here and there. 
For the petals, I'm just going to paint round leaf shapes that is placed radially around the center. I want the petals to be close to the center, but I try my best to not let it touch. If it does a little bit, it's fine, but I want the color of the flower to just be the buff titanium. And after painting the leaf shapes, I follow this up by adding curved or folded petals thinly between the ones that I've already painted, and I'm just going to do the same for the second one as well. While the new gamboge is still a little bit damp, I'm going to add on a thick consistency of the gold brown at the center just for a variation in color. For the stems, though I use the same color mixture, I use mostly sap green in the ratio. And after that, I'm just going to add another flower that is a bit smaller and I'm going to paint one from the side view so you can see the bottom of the flower connected to the stem. And that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Here are the list of colors. For this one, I was thinking of painting delphiniums. So I started out with tiny teardrop shapes at the top and I want to follow sort of like a triangular silhouette. So I place the flowers a bit larger and wider as I get towards the bottom. You can make all the flowers fully bloomed, but I think it's cute to have a little bit of green at the top, which is why I left them as small flower buds. And as I get towards the bottom, I just want to connect them all to one main stem and also smaller ones which are branching out. You can vary the silhouette, you can make it a bit wider or a bit more narrow and longer. It's completely up to you and you can play around with this in your composition. I'm going to begin by painting the flower buds and also the stem at the top. I just used a mixture of new gamboge and sap green without the sepia for this one because I want the green to be quite vibrant. And for this, I just made small brush marks. You don't have to make perfect teardrop shapes, but I like to place them sort of randomly as long as it forms sort of like a triangular silhouette and connect them in the middle with a really fine stem. For the stem, I just painted the ones for the top section first and leave out the parts for the flowers. I just want to scatter the flowers with the pink randomly spaced out. Just like the flower buds, I paint the flowers as single brush strokes that consist maybe of a single petal or two or more and continue this while the pink is wet with rows of ultramarine so some of the wet paint can mingle with each other creating a loose effect. After this, I followed it up by painting the stem in the middle and avoiding the pink flowers that I have and also paint the branches in between the flowers. I'm going to do the same thing for this next one. I just made it a little bit taller in the composition just so there's a little bit of variation in height. And as for the flowers, instead of using the color combination of pink and rose of ultramarine, this time I'm going to follow the pink up with new gamboge. Here are the finished delphinium flowers. For the next and final flowers, we're going to be painting poppies and here are the colors. Let's start with the petals. I'm going to be just drawing sort of abstract frilly petals and I also want to add lines as extra texture followed with the sepals and the wiggly stem. I'm also going to include another one which is just the budding flower so it's going to be smaller. As for the leaves, I'm going to paint them as lines so a line for the midrib and veins for the leaves which branches on either side. So let's paint. For the flower, I'm using a thin to medium consistency of pink. And here I'm applying pressure to the side of my brush in order to cover quite a bit of space while wiggling my brush to make the frilly petals. Between the petals, I like to leave out a tiny bit of space to separate the shapes. And as the paint is still a bit damp, I followed it up with the green from a mixture of new gamboge and sap green for the sepals and the wiggly stem. I did more or less the same thing for the smaller flower and I'm going to use the same green mixture to paint the leaves. Like before, the leaves are quite fine and you can use a smaller brush to paint them. 
As the petals are now dry, I also layered a thicker consistency of the pink to add on the textured lines. Then I'm going to soften some parts with a clean damp brush. So that's basically the final flower and as a final touch up and this is completely optional I'm going to just doodle on tiny leaves surrounding the flowers. So here I'm just doodling different types of leaves that I can think of and you can draw a few different types as well and place them in your painting so you don't have to think about them along the way. This can be anything from ferns to loose leaves or branches or tiny flowers or even berries. I'm sorry that my hand is basically covering my sketches but I'm sure you guys understand these basic shapes. For this I'm just going to mostly use the yellow green mix from New Gamboge and Sap Green but you can also mix up other tones of greens if you would like. Here because I'm painting these long leaves with a very tiny stem in the middle, I decided to swap to my size 0 brush and I'm basically just going to scatter different types of leaves around the flowers that I've already painted. This one is a bit odd, I just made oval shapes with a flat top which kind of flowers outwards. I'm not really sure what they are but you can basically make up different shapes for yours as well if you decide to add decorative elements for your own paintings. This next one is kind of fun. I made tiny little dots which clusters into an oval and I'm going to connect them downwards to a branching stem. After looking at all the greens, I wanted to brighten the composition more so I used the thick consistency new gamboge to paint tiny flowers for some of the branched leaves that I've already painted and even add single flowers with leaves surrounding them, anything that you feel would look cute in the composition. And here's the completed painting. This one was so colorful and fun and I hope you guys enjoy painting along to this one. Like usual, all the list of tools that I use in this video along with my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!